Welcome to Pitsco Straw Rockets. Uh, today we are going to learn how to put together one of the uh, Pitsco Straw Rockets in order to uh, launch it off of that particular launch system, which uh, it looks like this. So there are a few things that we absolutely have to have in order to make this. As we look at our uh, rocket, we can see that there are three main components. We have a cone. Uh, right now, this one is made out of clay. Uh, we have the tube, or the body of the rocket, which is a straw, just a plain drinking straw. And then we have uh, fins, which we've made out of just index cards, but any type of heavy paper, cardstock, paper plates uh, would do. We also uh, used uh, clear uh, cellophane tape in order to tape the uh, fins onto the bottom of the tube. So we will need our straw, we will either need something for the cone, like uh, the top of a, uh, uh, an eraser for a pencil or clay. Uh, we will need some type of heavy uh, card stock or index card or paper. Uh, we can use a ruler, uh, a pen, pencil, or a um, magic marker and uh, scissors. I also use, I, I took a bamboo skewer and uh, put some duct tape at the bottom of it. So as I'm working on this, I, I can hold it like uh, this in order to uh, more effectively get my hands around it and put on the fins and that sort of thing. But you don't have to have this, uh, but sometimes it makes it nice. So um, the other thing I'm going to show you first and foremost is about the fins. Uh, the number of the fins is up to you, uh, the size, the geometric shape uh, is really up to whoever is designing this. I've seen participants make large ones, small ones, square, rectangular, semicircle. Uh, I've seen them where they've uh, changed the size and shape, say, you know, three uh, large type of fins uh, with uh, small fins in between. Uh, again, it's just really up to the uh, participant and how they want to actually design it. But this is the most simplistic uh, rocket that you can make, um, particularly with uh, participants whose motor skills are not well defined. Uh, they may have trouble uh, with uh, cutting things precisely. Um, just a just developing their uh, eye to hand coordination. So for those students, the first thing I suggest is folding an index card or paper in half and then folding it in half again. Taking their scissors and where the uh, index card is loose, in other words, it's not a closed point just taking their scissors and starting from one end to the other corner or one corner to the other corner. Then what they do is they open up and they have a shape like a kite. Close it back up and they can cut the middle and then reach up inside and cut uh, along the line that they had folded and now they have four identical uh, fins. Uh, another way of, of doing this, again, fold in half, fold in half, and we do the opposite cut. Instead of cutting from this corner to this corner, we're going to cut from this corner to this corner. And uh, what will happen is it avoids any other cuts. So now we have again, four of the same. 
So in one index card, we can get out eight, as many as eight fins, like so. Now, how we attach those fins to the straw. First of all, we don't want to attach the fin at the very base of the straw. We want to move up a little bit. Um, that is where I use my little handy dandy bamboo skewer, but again, you don't have to. What I do normally is I will mark uh, a certain amount of space between the base of the uh, straw onto the straw body. Now you can take your ruler, you can eyeball it. Um, I usually like doing one centimeter, so I just make a line of one centimeter uh, in order to tell me where I'm going to put the base of the fin. Now in this case I would like to use just four fins, so I need to know where to place them. The best way to do this is uh, equal distance apart. So to that end, what I do is I make a line, and then I turn the straw over, and I, I can see, I don't know that if you can, but I can actually see the uh, other side, and I can tell that my other line is about right there. Now I go side to side where I can see both of the lines I've marked on either side and I put another line in the middle of those two lines. So now I have four lines marked of where I want to place my fin. However, smaller children, younger children uh, may not have the dexterity uh, in their hands to do that, and that's fine if, if they don't. The other thing I, that's a must have is some tape. So what I do is prior to getting started, I take some tape and I put it along my desk so I can just pick it up and grab it. Um, in order to help see how I'm taping this, I'm going to take a folder and I'm going to put it down in my work area so you can see the, the white fin better. So what I do is I take my tape and I measure about half of it and place it down on the fin. So I've got half of the tape on the fin. Then I take my straw and I line it up with the fin with the straw where that line I marked was and I wrap the tape down. So now I have one fin adhered and I repeat this process until I've got all of the fins placed on my rocket. So I need two more fins and then what I'm going to do is go back over on the other side and uh, tape it down in order so I'm going to tape this down in order to uh, make sure that it's taped really well and that uh, it does not, uh, the fins don't fly off as it's traveling through uh, the air. So now I've just got all my fins taped down in place. So I'll take my tape and tape the other side as I stated before. So this is how I'm doing that. So now my fins are taped on both sides. Now with regards to the cone, I really just need to decide uh, what I'm going to use for my cone. 
whether I'm going to use a pencil eraser or clay. So I'll show you uh, both. So now as you can see, uh, my cones are, I'm um, sorry, my fins are adhered uh, to my rocket. So I can use, like I said, for the cone, uh, the top of a pencil or eraser um, or um, a piece of clay. And you don't need a lot of clay, just very little point of fact, um, because weight is a serious issue uh, with rockets. You don't, you don't want uh, too much weight, uh, but uh, because it'll just the, the rocket as soon as it launches will drop and you don't want too little weight because it'll spin in the air so uh, sometimes if you have it available to you you can use uh, a scale and, and weigh uh, your uh, cone material so as I turn my scale on I've got it in customary measurement, which would be pounds or ounces, things of that nature, versus metric, which would be in grams. So I'm going to put my uh, the eraser that goes on the top of the pencil, and it's 0.1 ounces. So I now want to see how much my clay weighs. My clay weighs, uh, it, it's not even <laughs> registering. Uh, it's less than 0.1. So uh, these are quite uh, close together in weight except for uh, maybe a tenth of a gram or so. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my scale to the side. You don't have to have a scale, but it, it is nice to have one. If I was going to adhere just the uh, pencil eraser. You can see I've got some room and it'll fly off. What I can simply do is take some masking tape or clear tape and I can uh, tape that on and around. Now uh, I, I believe I'm going to go ahead and use clay and basically what you want to do is just put a little bit of the clay, press it down to where it covers just the top of the two, and then shape it uh, whatever way you want. Now I had done uh, a cone, you know, a bit of an arrow on top, but you certainly could, you know, make it circular with flat on top, a square, just basically any geometric shape you want, but realize the shape of the cone uh, will either help the rocket in flight or it will hinder it. Um, and so part of the activities that we're going to be doing uh, today uh, is to design a rocket and uh, experiment with it and determine under what conditions uh, a particular design or launch angle or even um, launch pressure uh, works better. So then again, this is the most simplistic design. And again, remember, you can cut the tube as uh, short as you would like. Remember, uh, there needs to be some proportionality between the size of the cone, the tube, and the fins in order to, to uh, launch and have some amount of flight. Well, I thank you, and uh, when we come back, we will look at the launcher and determine um, how it works and why. Thank you.